Hi, I'm Rick Sellens, and I just wanted to give you some hints and a little review on using for loops in the context that we'll do in uh, MEC 217, where we're working with the Arduino IDE. We need to get printing working, and I always make mistakes getting started. A typical for loop might look like this. For a new integer variable i starting at zero, and continuing as long as i is less than 4, and incrementing i by 1 at the end of each pass through the loop, do the code inside the curly braces. Now, right now, there's no code inside the curly braces, so let's put something there. And we see what we expect, counting from 0 up to 3. It's important to note that by declaring a new variable i, we've made the scope of that variable only inside the curly braces here, so this is the only place where the variable i actually exists. We can see that that's true by trying to print it somewhere else, and it just doesn't exist outside the for loop. That's a huge advantage if we're trying to make sure that our for loop doesn't mess up any other variable that might be named i that's important in our code. So keeping the scope of the variable as tight as possible is a good thing. So let's do something useful. Read some analog values, sum them up, divide by the total number of values to get an average, and print it out. We need the rtclib.h library to make sure that we can print out uh, floating point values with serial printf. And of course, we need to remember the variable in the printf call. Let's try averaging over 10. Obviously, the average is wrong. And if we think about it, we'll know that it's because we didn't change the 4 down here as well as the 4 up there. Almost always, you'll be using constants more than once. So it's really good to define them as symbolic constants so that you can use them in the same place. And when you change them, they'll change everywhere that they, uh, that they exist. Let's make an integer list of analog ports and use another for loop to go through that whole list, repeating the process. Our summing variable will need to be an array, too. And we'll need to make sure that our uh, averaging and printing element is inside the loop for the various different parts so that we print out for each part. And let's define the number of ports that we've got in the list as a constant so that we don't mess up with that uh, explicit number as well. Adding a delay will slow it down enough that we can see what's going on on human scale time instead of computer scale time. Because the averaging loop is inside the ports loop, we're first taking three values from the first port, then three values from the second port, then three values from the third port. We could reverse that order if we change the nesting, and you might want to think of reasons you would or wouldn't want to do that. Another way we might mess up is if we change the number of ports in our list without changing our n ports constant. We can make that simpler by just making sure the last port in our list is an invalid port, like 999, and then test to see if we've reached the end of the list. We can put any condition we want in a for loop to decide whether or not to keep going through the loop. So this allows us to embed some knowledge, some information about the nature of our list right in the list without needing to have a separate variable. When we change that, the result is it automatically catches up. We only need to change it in one place, even if our end ports value is not, uh, not correct anymore. When you're coding, try to build in simple features like this that will help make your code more reliable. So it won't break when you change things, and you won't be stumped trying to figure out what went wrong. Sometimes you might want to iterate on a variable that exists outside the for loop. 
In this case with J, having it still exist after we're done our for loop lets us figure out how many ports we actually looked at. We need to make sure it isn't declared twice, once inside the loop and once outside the loop, because that would be two different variables, both with the same name J, and that would be very confusing. So now the code can be aware of how many values there actually were in that list, how many different analog ports, and it can share that information with us by printing it out afterwards. Whatever code you write for microcontrollers, it's going to involve a lot of for loops like these. So it's good to get the mechanics of using them down so that it's second nature. Practice, practice, and then some more practice, and you'll have lots of success with your coding and make fewer frustrating mistakes.